see it on my YouTube. Let's see. Looking through some of the comments. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Oh my gosh. We're up. Sorry, everyone. Sorry about that. We had some technical stuff going on. Everything worked fine in test. 15 minutes later, no audio, but we're back. Great to be back with you guys. Um, this is getting to be a long time. Um, <laughs> but listen, we can, we can make some good out of it. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's be creative. Let's, let's find some fun stuff to do. And that's what I hope to do today is, is get you guys some fun little uh, ideas that you can work on at home to be creative and, uh, make some music. Um, I am going to, uh, first I want to thank, let's, uh, you know, Apogee is, is, worked tireless, tirelessly with me to like get all of this done. This whole video and streaming stuff is something I've never done. And they, I really want to thank like Bob and Betty and Cody and Seb and the team over there, um, Sean, all these guys have been just killing it. Marlene, everybody's been so helpful. That team is just incredible. So I want to thank Apogee. Um, and before I start, oh, also want to say if, um, if you guys got an iPad with GarageBand on it, you could grab that now um, and and follow along a little bit. I'll be working off the session that I did last week. So last week I did I did a session using the Apogee Jam Plus, which is like one of my favorite, if not my favorite, guitar iOS device for sure. Um, it's just a one input device, and I I put some guitars down and. Uh, it's just kind of going through like how I would create when I'm on my own or on the road or if I just have an iOS device with me. This is this is the way I do it and put down ideas and then transfer those from good GarageBand to Logic. Um, today we're gonna we're gonna build on that same session, and we are going to use the Apogee hype mic today. And I'll talk I'll, I'll bring this off the stand and show you some of the things that I want to talk about. Um, with the hype mic, which there's some really cool things with this thing. And it's a, it's a really great microphone. Um, yeah. So, oh, and remember to ask questions. I have a little bit of a lag time here and I see, I already see some people in there. I see uh, Alex from audio test kitchen. Um, Steven Penny staying up late. Um, Swedberg been many years. Yeah, a lot of people. Rhea, Kate, um, hey, Jared's on there. Um, so great to see you guys. I haven't got to see you guys in a while. We've been all cooped up and stuff. Um, but ask ask questions. I'll um, I'll try to keep up with them as much as I can. I'm gonna basically today take you through a process of what what would I do if I got. A session like this right like I'm creating this but I'm also gonna take the approach of if somebody if if a producer sent me this session and said hey Brent I need some guitars we're kind of at the front end of the of the creative process on this and I want some guitars I don't know exactly what I want so that's that's how I'm treating this right now um, sometimes when I'm doing a session I will if if it's really specific I'll super narrow in on like the parts got to be just this right but if I get a session <clears throat> where the producer is at the start, he doesn't quite know the vibe he's gonna go for, maybe there's no top line on there, so it's not really completely directing the track and, and where it's gonna go, I will just, I'll, I'll start, basically what my theory is at, at that point is to give the producer a a bunch of creative toolkit pieces, that's what I kinda call them. And, and it's basically like a bunch of guitar parts that work in the song that he can use or not use. And sometimes I, I edit those ideas a bit, but I don't heavily, heavily edit them because I never know what somebody else might do with that idea. Um, they might get it and go, that's a great acoustic guitar, but I'm gonna reverse every chord and use it as something different. Great. 
I, I succeeded in my job. I got them something that use is useful for them and was a creative asset. So that's, that's what I'm going for. Um, so let's, let's do, let's do a little recap. I want to do a little recap of what I did last week. And what's really great about this is I got the iPad screen up there now. So you guys will be able to see what I'm doing on the iPad and I'll just do a little recap. Um, there is the whole thing that I did last week is on Apogee's YouTube page and you can always go back. So I'll kind of run through this a little bit quick for the recap. And then if you want to really dive into it, you can, um, you can go to Apogee's page and check that out. So here's what we made last time. This is what it sounds like. So we had a simple progression. I had a guitar progression and we just layered and added some instruments and guitars to it how we how we did this is we started by basically opening garage band with drummer with the smart instrument drummer and leah i believe is the first drummer that shows up even and i probably simplified her a little bit i can't remember exactly what i did last week but i wanted it to just be a simple enough beat that i can play over and get my idea over um from there we added we added the guitar part that i I thought of and you guys if you're listening in headphones you're gonna hear that just on the left side I put one to the left side and I ended up going ahead and doubling that guitar part something I'll commonly do in a track it gives it that, like a nice wide thing and you'll see I'm gonna do that with the acoustic today too so we did that we just added a couple acoustic or a couple electric guitars the main guitar part and by the way if you're following um, with chords, let me pull that iPad off. I'm gonna just tell you the chords again, right? And I'll be going over these with the acoustic. Um, so chord wise, um, I'm, it's they're pretty basic chords. So we're doing a D minor seven, right? And I pull the second finger off, which which, which gives us a nine there. So this chord's like a D minor seven to D minor nine. The second chord could also be thought of as like an A minor seven. For you guitar players out there, you know this kind of A minor seven chord. If it's the bottom part, you're really just putting the the D in there. It's kind of a nice, kind of a nice way to do it because you pull up the third, so you get a little. It, the chord kind of hangs. The vibe is just a rather than you know this. We don't get that third in there. So we're going. It's our first chord. Second chord, and this is an A minor seven. Um, I'm I totally play way more electric than acoustic, so I play a lot of my chords like an electric guitar player. Um, so I play them fairly small at times because other things are going to take up room, right? A keyboard or something. So this this chord, A minor seven, or A A minor seven would be like that, or A minor. I play like this. So we're going D minor, D minor seven, D minor nine, A minor seven. To C major seven, to G major seven. So however you wanna, wanna play those. So the C major seven, it's like a, for you guitar players, right? It's like a C, but a major seven is, you're adding that. To a G major seven. So that's our chord progression. Two, three, four. So fairly simple chord progression. It's fairly straight, except the G major seven is just a little bit of a, a little bit of a curveball in there. Um, but it's fairly straight chord progression. Um, so that was our our drums and and guitar. What we did from there is we added a percussion instrument. So we just added this per smart instrument. And guys, I gotta really, really, really push these smart instruments in GarageBand. They're so absolutely incredible for creative um, creative starts and just in general. This is like this might stay in my track you know um so we added some percussion after that 
Um, we added this little em this little endless ambient thing, which was just a guitar thing going through a funky weird effect. So I could just get like a little bit. It's like a, you can't really even tell that it's a um, guitar. You know, it's just adding that atmosphere in the background. Um, so we put that in. Then we put in an, a live a, a bass guitar. Um, and we did this using the autoplay button. Oh, I gotta get back up to the iPad scene. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so we did this using using the autoplay button up here. So that's just the, the smart bass. Adding a simple progression. And then we added the electric piano. And the electric piano is another um, garage band smart instrument. And that just works in chord strips. So you have. So I don't have to know how to play piano. <laughs> so we added that piano. So that's that's what we did last week. We built up the track a little bit. It probably looks like it took a long time to add all of this stuff, but it didn't. If you watch back the video, these things are pretty quick and easy. And if you get used to GarageBand and get used to the smart instruments, you can you can get around really quick and really get some really great inspiring creative stuff happening really quickly. So that's what we had, right? Or we have still, but this week, I'm gonna show you what we're going to do. This week, let me go to section B. I made another section in GarageBand. I'll show you how that all works. And I laid out a bunch of acoustic guitars. So what I did was I kept the shaker the little ambient thing I thought was cool in there. I'm gonna turn the click track on when I do this because I'm gonna need that click track. I kept the electric piano and I added a bunch of acoustic guitar. So I just went in here and I added, let's see. So that's just another stereo acoustic guitar. So like I did, like I did the electric guitars, I did a, one on the left first and I did one on the right next. That's exactly what I did with these, elect, these acoustics. I went and capoed that. I capoed then on the fifth fret, played the same chords again so I could get four acoustics. And then I kind of get that, I get closer to somewhat of that like wall of sound thing. Um, and I did some strums on there too. Just some straight strums. I don't know if those would be used or not for sure. I'm not sure, but I'll show you where I think they, they, they I'll show you where they come in really handy at the end. Um, so I added six acoustic guitars, but once I get it all set up, it's, it's fairly easy because you just duplicate the track and start adding guitars as you know, how they sound. So let's, I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I did this and um, grab the acoustic. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hype mic mm -hmm. too and how I'm setting that up because that's important, obviously. And uh, we'll start adding this. So let me go back here in GarageBand. We got GarageBand up, okay. So in GarageBand, GarageBand works in sections. Uh, I don't know really any other DAWs that kind of work like that, but this is kind of cool that GarageBand works like this. You can kind of focus on a section at a time. So. Section A is what we worked on last time. That was all right here. So if we just go over to our, oops, so our song sections button, and right now we have section A highlighted, I'm gonna just go ahead and duplicate that and it's gonna go to section C and it makes a brand new section for us. This section C sounds exactly like what section A sounds like. I'm gonna record acoustic guitars on this area so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these these tracks here. All of these, all these acoustics, they'll be gone. So we're gonna make new acoustic tracks. I'll re-record that whole thing. Um, and remember, I don't want to. I don't want these electrics here. So let's get let's get let's get rid of these. Uh, I don't want the drums. I'm gonna leave the percussion. I don't like this little 
popcorn line that I did. Um, and I'm going to take the base out too. So at this point, at this point in my process, I'm thinking, what, what else could I add? What might be a cool part? What could be good for the producer to have to, to mess with or for the top line person to sing over? I don't know. Right. So I'm going to just start adding some things that I think are cool and then they just get sent to the producer. So let, let me start though, by talking about the hype mic. So hype mic, you guys know this, everybody, anybody? Anybody have a hype mic? I'll watch the, uh, I'll watch the, the, these are so delayed. The comments are so delayed. So I'll, I'll look back, but let me explain a couple things about the hype, hype mic before I record. And then you guys will kind of see what I'm doing with this thing and see the kind of settings I'm using to make it work for me. So the hype mic has these, these five different blend settings first off. Okay. So Right now, the blend settings are are switched with this button right underneath the lights that you see changing there, right? So right now we're in the first blend setting with the first light, right? So in the first blend setting, you get some of GarageBand will come in, but you get 90%, pretty much like 90% of of your voice will come through. So you can start to hear me coming through there very strong. If I press play on GarageBand, it's pretty quiet. So it really quieted it down. So that that's that blend setting. So why the blend setting? The blend setting is there is because, because the blend setting is like a zero latency feature. Um, it, it, it's basically, I don't even have an acoustic track up right now, but the mic is working, right? So that's not, that's not as common for, for iOS kind of things. You have to monitor through the software, which gives you latency, not always terrible. Um, and sometimes you just want to work with it because you're going to be working with the sound and you just got to deal with the latency because you got to play along with whatever the sound is happening inside the inside the processing that you're doing to your guitar. Um, but for something like straight acoustic guitars, or sometimes if you want to just be perfectly rhythm, rhythmically on, like I talked about this last week with the jam and that's super important rhythm for me, rhythm is, is number one, absolutely number one. That's, that's my reason. I feel like the, one of the biggest reasons I have my gig, but rhythm. So if you want to be right in there, try to make sure it's you're using a lot of the direct but now you you see that i'm barely hearing that so that's not the blend setting i'd want to use so i would go to now there's another blend setting that's the second of five blend settings and you you hear that my voice got a little bit quieter garage band got a little bit louder if i go to the middle this is a 50-50 mix. You'll hear that GarageBand gets a little louder and I got a little quieter again. It just keeps on working like that. Go one more, I'm a little bit quieter. GarageBand's a little louder. One more over and you can't even hear me at this point. You're probably, if I turn off my talkback mic. Yeah, so that last setting, you're not hearing any of the input from the hype mic. So when I'm recording acoustic guitar, honestly, I'm typically on a 50-50 setting. Somewhere around 50-50, I might go a little bit more because you can kind of hear your your acoustic through your headphones or you can pull an ear off. Um, <clears throat> so you got that. The other cool thing about the hype mic is you have this compression mode okay so there's three three settings of compression on the hype mic this is what i love about the hype mic um if you're gonna put anything in your chain between a microphone and your daw you want compression definitely that's that's the first thing you're gonna want over eq over anything in my in my eyes um but I, and and i always have i'm li literally pr pretty much every time I record, I'm, I'm recording through compression. If I'm recording my amp, I'm recording acoustic. I'm always using compression beforehand. So there's three settings on here. 
the settings are selected on the hype mic for compression by pressing this middle knob here, okay? This middle knob also works as your input for getting the volume up or down in your hype mic. And you can see when I start cranking it, it gets red because it's overloading. So now the compression, if I press that, that's compression setting number one. So that's kind of, that's your, your lightest compression. Um, and it's actually it's actually a pretty heavy light compression. So be careful when you're setting that up. Always always listen if it's clamping down too much. You might be too close. You can back off. You got a little compression now, so you're okay. Compression setting that's the my, that's the medium setting, and then there's the squash mode, which you can pretty much hear in here. It's like it gets really squashy. Right, and you can hear it in my voice even. You can hear it like clamp down, like that kind of radio thing. Um, so there's no compression. I'll go through them like this. Let me turn off my, let me turn off my other mic. Alrighty, so this is, this is just the hype mic. So here's the hype mic, no compression. Here's the mic, hype mic with compression one, hype mic compression two, hype mic compression three. So that's the super squash. So that's, that's your difference. For those of you guys who might not know what compression is, compression is basically taking those loud parts. So think about it for a singer. Compression for the singer is the greatest thing in, in between the chain. Singer gets really loud, compression takes and pulls those peaks down a little bit and it helps bring those bottoms up. So it just compresses the signal. That's as simple as it is. Um, and compression also has a quality to it. Like, like people like, certain old compressors there's different kinds of compressors they they do different things and sound like different you know they just give a little different character so um anyways i for me honestly when i'm doing acoustic i'm gonna probably use either the the one that's in the middle or i'm gonna use compression setting number one so let's start there and i on I'm on the middle blend mode right now so I'm gonna start there anybody got any questions on that you can write me I'm trying to see I see Laura in there right Ray 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 and Anna love love the the pig shirt the old vintage Pink Floyd I know I like this one I wish they made them like this still the comfy shirts um okay Let's see what we got. All right, so my room mic's off, so I'm gonna be leaning down a little bit to talk into the hype mic. Um, and tell me if I get really quiet, uh, and I will try to talk louder <laughs> or turn the mic up. Um, I, have, I have my room mic off right now, so you're just, you're just hearing me through the hype mic. Um, Signal's pretty hot. So that's just the 50-50 blend. The compression setting is at the second setting. Let me try the first setting. Or was I on the first setting? Not sure. We're on the first setting now. So, so we, when, I, when I start, I'll, I'll get the part. I kind of know that I wanted to play some kind of strummy part. I worked on this a little bit earlier to see what I would add to this so I know I know I want to play some kind of strummy kind of part at that point I would start to this is a little nitpicky but it makes a difference I, I start to I start to look at when it, for acoustic so for electric I use these super monstrously big picks like these are my NERD and they're like rocks <laughs> they're on their 2.0s um, they're not the greatest for acoustic, for, for strumming even. And they're kind of a dark pick. So like some people will call a pick like the 10% EQ. Um, 
and it, it kind of is, and especially with acoustic. Um, acoustic parts, I'll typically go with a real light pick, and I just keep, you guys see a bunch of these picks are like this. Like, if you see me in the studio ever, you'll see picks just all over my amp, just a bunch of different picks. I don't, I, I just grab whatever, you know? Um, I'll just try to make sure I got like, a few different light to medium picks when I'm doing acoustic guitar. I kind of like the way that sounds. So for instance, with like a real thin pick like this tortoise shell, this is probably like a 60 or something. I don't know. It's really light. It's it just has a, it has a really nice tone to it has a really great tone to it. So I'll, I, I will I will stick with something like this. So for this one, I'm gonna stick with the, this pick. I'm just using, I know probably people will ask, I'm using just my J45 I got from Gibson. Um, really fantastic guitar. Um, sounds great. When I'm setting up to record acoustic, kind of your rule of thumb with recording acoustic is the first thing to try is to get your mic kind of set up so it's like right pointed at the 12th fret. And I don't, I, I, I will literally just put on my headphones in the room and kind of move around a little bit to see where my best, let me see. just to kind of see it seems like this it seems like this mic kind of lights that 12th fret position oh probably what like about 10 inches 12 inches away from the mic compression setting one and i get that set up and i feel like cool i'm i'm ready to go so this point where is so there's my track let me go ahead and i'm going to just hit the plus button down here at the bottom of the screen which will open up my, so I can get a new track going. I'm gonna to go to audio recorder and you'll see an audio recorder, there's an instrument. So you can just hit instrument. So we still hear the acoustic guitar because we're hearing it direct, right? But if we wanted to hear what, what it's doing in the processing, we can turn monitoring off. Now you hear me with a bunch of, a little bit of verb and stuff, cause that's what's on the processing here. And if we wanted to just hear that, we would put the blend knob all the way to the right and we wouldn't hear any direct signal. Um, so it's not too bad. I could leave it on, honestly. I could track like that, especially cause I can hear it. I can hear the acoustic directly my headphones partly off but I'll turn it off for now and I would just just keep it straight um, at this point I would I'd press the return to zero button on on GarageBand and press record and record my first part so I'm gonna go ahead and record my first acoustic guitar part here and um, and then I'm gonna double that part so let's let's do that Let's hear. So there's our first acoustic part. So I'm going to just tap it. I'm going to duplicate it so I can just have it here. Oops. There we go. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm gonna do what I did last week. So I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna leave one guitar on the left. That's what I'd typically do. So I'll go over here into my track settings. In this first guitar, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the left side. This next guitar, I'll go ahead and put that on the right side. Uh, let me close those track settings. Let me get back into that instrument view. 
I will go ahead and track a part to double it. So let's go back, return to zero, and let's let's double that part. So let's hear what that sounds like. I don't know if any of you guys got headphones on, but you'll hear it in stereo at this point. So there's our first two parts. That's what I'd stick with. I'd do that first one part, double it up. And by the way, I'm gonna turn, let's see this kind of I'm going to set this blend knob a little bit different. I'm going to set that blend knob so I don't hear myself quite I'm having a hard time because we're just, it's just percussion and, and a click track. So I want to make sure to hear myself better. I'm going to turn those down just a little bit. Those first two acoustic tracks. And I'm going to duplicate both of those. Because that duplicate is going to be a duplicate uh, for a track that's that's on the left side, that first one. This one here is going to be a, I'm going to duplicate this track. And that'll be on the right side. Now, at this point, I love that whole wall of, so wall of sound thing. Um, so... Uh, I would I would try to figure out like how I could make it get this like kind of big acoustic strummy kind of thing like you know uh, the George Harrison kind of thing he was doing you know um, so I will I will probably at this point take and capo it I would just capo at the fifth fret and remember our chords were D minor right so if we did a bar chords we got the we got the at the capo now to E, E minor, E minor 7, you know, D minor 9, right? And then we got to get to C major 7. We went to C major 7 here, but we could do C major 7 right here. It's just like a, I'm just doing a C major 7 like that, I'm 7th on top. Then I'll go to a G. I'll skip the major seven. I didn't really like the way it sounds on, on that. So let's, um, I'll, I'll put in like a, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a part again. It's gonna be extremely similar. It's just basically the voicings are just a tiny, tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit different. Um, but you'll start to see how it starts to create this like big, wall of sound kind of wash thing. So let me let me do that really quick. So let me put this in. Okay. Here we go. So check that out. Here's the last one I recorded. Cool. Let's get a double of that one. So I'll go get on this track and I'm gonna double that part now. got this nice big yeah. any questions any questions it's pretty nice right
All right, so I got my talk. This is the talk back mic now. Um, so I might want to put I might want to put another track in there, another two tracks in there too, and I'll, I'll show you why. So let me let me let me go ahead and duplicate these one more time. So I want to do another stereo thing, another stereo guitar thing. So I'll go ahead and duplicate those. Let me pull these down here. Boom. All right. So at this point, I, I th this I, I would like to get some straight, just some straight strums in there. Just just straight strums, and I'll show you why. It it actually it sounds pretty nice along with the the strumming part that's going on. Um, but there's other things you can do with it. So let me turn off my turn off my room mic. Okay, so I'm back on here. Let's see. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna just do the strums this time. Let's go to the next track. So here's our next track. That's a little trick. That's a little trick in switching tracks if you want. Ah, let me get back there. If you want to switch tracks, you can you can hold the tracks view button. Come on. Ah, for some reason, <laughs> me getting it from this angle isn't working. But if you hold the tracks view button, you can usually, yeah, you can select the track that you want to get to. So I'm gonna to go to the last one, which is already selected. So I'm gonna I'm gonna double that. I'm gonna double that part that I just did. Just the straight strums. We call them diamonds. Um, that's what I call them, I guess. So let's go back and hear what I did there. So those those are the straight. Let me turn my that back on, uh, my room mic back on. Here is just, this is what I just did. So those are, those are that's the last two parts I did. Add to that the two parts before. Hi Shiloh. Then add those other two parts which are the lower ones. Now you kind of got something, right? So we went, so there's our two parts. There's like one really solid guitar part that, that a top line person could work over, right? Somebody could start practicing their, you know, or start working on like lyrics and melodies. Shoot, uh, one of my, my students and artists, Rhea, did, did a, a, already put a melody to this from last week. So it's just really super cool. So that's, that's kind of, and, and if this is mine, right? Like I try to get to this point where I'm not, I don't really want to overproduce right off the cuff. I want to have a bunch of tools. I want to have a bunch of kind of creative things that I can kind of pull in and out, <clears throat> but I don't want to get too much into producing the track. Cause it's, it's funny. Like once, once a track is kind of like the basic foundation is there, basic chords, basic beat melody doesn't even have to be lyrics like that's the kind of that's the place i really want to start from it kind of tells you what to do from there so these are all just like things that i think are really really good to do to just kind of try to get it in there so you can really get the vibe of things going so at this point there's that section 
we're just using the same Rhodes piano from the last time. We're using this little endless ambient vibey sound that I did and the percussion. And in fact, I might even take and go, I don't need a clap in the percussion for this part. It's as simple as just <laughs> opening it up and turning the clap off. Cool. So that's that's section C, right? Let's do this. Let's go back. I'm going to I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to section A and I am going to duplicate that and it's going to push it right after section C. And let's see what it sounds like going from I haven't listened to this yet. So we got to go from go all sections and I'm going to go from section C which is right here. You guys still got my iPad up? Yep. I'm gonna go from section C. If I press play here, I know it'll be kind of a jolty change, but we can hear. And we'll see the, the rest of the stuff come in. So it's just one section to another section there. really quick I'll show you uh, and and th this is uh let me let me show you because remember I did those diamond guitars and I wanted to show I, I want to show you something really cool that I do with these when I, I I I'll do this a lot with with um just playing some chords in a song like that if it's if it's got like a bar or whatever a long enough time because then I can reverse them so watch watch what I do here so I'm gonna take I'm gonna put, let me put, do, 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 do. let me put section C. That's the one we just made, right? I'm gonna duplicate that. It's gonna go after D. So now, I'll go back to all sections here. Now I have these reverse guitars right here. I'm gonna take and copy those. So we're gonna hold these both tap them and then press copy. I'll move the cursor back over and press right here and I'm going to paste them. So now I just pasted them into the section before, into that section like I made last week. Actually works there too. So it's, it's cool, right? So we have another, again, back, you wanna, you wanna have your creative toolkit filled up, right? When you're building these things. So, it actually doesn't sound so bad then going in. So if we, if we, one thing we can do with these is take and pull them all the way in there. Go like this. Pull this one all the way over here. Let me get that, hold on. Okay, now we can go like this. Go to settings, reverse it. Go to settings, reverse it. Let's pull this beginning out because there's a little clip from the chord before. We'll pull the beginning out. And then let's take and pull, let's stop the drums and percussion like a bar before so we get like a little bit of a... You guys check that out so I left a bar I took the drums I muted the drums for one bar and then I put the reverse guitars in so we can get that little up oh, thing to happen check it out again so we get a little bit of like a change we know a change is coming up then and then we're into the next section Pretty cool, right? Questions, anybody? I'm watching, I'm watching, unless, unless they're not coming through. So it's jumping around. So that's, that's, that, that was, that's what I wanted to show today and, and just open up for any questions. Last time I didn't really do too many questions at the end. 
I want to make sure if you guys have any questions about this. And did I say this earlier? We're doing it. it it's a giveaway today. So Apogee is giving away a Jam Plus. I still don't know how we're deciding who to give it away to yet. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll watch my I'll watch my texts here and see if uh, one of the Apogee people hit me up and tell me how we're going to do this. I'm not really sure. Um, but I'll continue a little bit with this. So let me do a little bit of review and um, and show you what we got. So here's what we did today. We actually made six new acoustic guitar parts. With the first two, we, we laid a simple foundation down, just the open chord acoustic parts. I decided I wanted to do a simple strumming acoustic thing. Just with open chords, right? Standard kind of, I guess what they call cowboy chords. It went to C major seven and went to straight open G. Okay. Did a left right of that so I can have a nice stereo pan of that. I took a capoed on the I capoed on the fifth fret so I could play things a little so I could play them open and I it's the same thing D minor to D minor nine I added over top of it E minor to E minor seven it's doing the same notes it's just there some are in different positions so we're just making a little bit wider at that point and that was those these first two were the these were the first two basic tracks and the next two again hard panned left and right we um we uh we did those then hard pan left and right and then we did our straight strums and you saw what i did with the strums we 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 can take the strums and anything in garage band if you tap it and go to settings there's a bunch of different things you can you can change in there too so one of them is the reverse which is really pretty cool so that's all i did with that and that's like kind of some standard studio tricks um that i'll do um okay let me see trivia question marlene wrote me and said trivia question i don't know exactly what she means um uh, <laughs> let me see um I think she meant maybe she wants, I don't know. We all got, uh, everybody got that kind of down. Any any other, and let me let me look through and see if I missed some of these. Um, um, oh yeah, okay. It's Zeus, some strings. Yes, you can send those to me. Instagram, my Instagram's up there. Hit me on Instagram. Um, let me see. Let me see. See, people like the mic. It's a great mic, right? So the mic, a little info on the mic. Um, Apogee still has them. Because stuff is kind of hard to get right now. Um, but uh, they are $350, I believe. Um, which I think is a great buy, especially when you get the um, compression in there. It can be used um, for your iPad, any iOS device, and can also um, also with the computer, obviously. So anywhere you want to use that. Um, yeah, I was trying to see if there's any other questions. Let me look through. Let's see. Okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. What did Cody say? Cody say. Uh, Cody, where are these? Cody posted a question for me. Oh yeah, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, I gotta get. I gotta get that right. Right. Um, subscribe to the channel. Please like it. I gotta get all these like social network things down. Um, <laughs> um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. That's the Apogee channel. It's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, but I think that's about it. 
if I don't have any other questions. Um, okay, there we go. Apogee just put something in there. All right. For today's giveaway, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and type jam in the comments right now. Yo, go for it. Get that free mic. Yo, I, seriously, I got um, some friends who got this. This is a great mic to have around. It really is. Um, so, yeah, try to get it. Everybody, write jam in there now. <laughs> um, okay, so what do we got? Let's see. Yeah, so at this point, I'd probably just mess around with things. That's, 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 uh, I hope, I hope that's helpful to everyone. Um, what it says, give away, like, uh, one like video, two subscribe type jam. Okay. Yeah. Just, just telling you to get in on that giveaway. So yeah, that's it. Please. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to reach out to me, I'm at Instagram. My Instagram is right up there at Brent Paschke. I have a website, um, I do do lessons. Um, I'm home a lot right now, like everyone. Um, yeah, reach out to me. Um, I'd love to hear if you guys um, add anything. I would love to hear it. If you want the session, reach out to me. I'll just shoot you over the garage band session. Um, and you can mess around with it. Totally happy to do that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Everybody, say, stay safe. Um, try to keep your chin up. I know it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to be cooped up. Um, but listen, um, get that phone out, that iOS device. Download, make sure to download GarageBand and all the packs and, and try some of this stuff. Grab grab a couple interfaces. It's really easy. You can sit in bed and make some cool progressions. Basically how I do a lot of this stuff is I'll, I'll, I'll just be noodling around on my guitar. That whole progression it's just me just sitting around I'll just kind of find some chords that I like and the beautiful thing about having these iOS devices that you can plug in so quick and having something like GarageBand that just gives you really really great you know creative tools is you can you can kind of quickly get something out there you know um, so yeah um don't don't okay so 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 apogee's writing me some stuff i'm trying to trying to keep up trying to keep up sorry guys um uh oh we 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 do we do need to do the giveaway we need to do the giveaway that's why right. okay hold on hold on uh chris chris asked um hey sweat how you doing man um how would you make a pretend Oh, that's a great question, Chris. Um, okay. Well, it, it's it's uh, to make it to make it really like okay. This is something I noticed. Like, how Chris Chris asked how how would you make a particular track stand out without just turning up that track's volume, right? Um, I think there's okay. So there's a couple different ways to answer that. Um, one. Um, I feel like it, well, it's, it's, it, it's really, it's kind of, it, it, it's sound choices that, that are huge. Right. Um, when I listen to something I notice about like a Pharrell track or a Timbaland track, right? Like 
<clears throat> take those two guys for example they're super super minimal but they're super minimal and they and they just have really great really great choices of sounds so it's like it's easy it's easy to like get a kick drum to to hit super hard when there's nothing in the way of it right it doesn't like in some ways it you know, you gotta have, pick a pretty good one, obviously. But if there's nothing in the way of it, if there's not a bass guitar that's taking up that same frequency frequency space, or something else that's taking up that space, like so, something I noticed like that Tim and Pharrell and Chad do so well is like there's obviously other producers that do this extremely well, but like they they keep things really simple and they really really just kind of get their sound choices really right so that's like that's one of the reasons you'll you'll hear me preach about like don't don't worry about don't worry about like you know worry worry about worry about getting a really really good sounding guitar first and a really good sounding amp and then start dealing with the other stuff that was always my kind of rule of thumb i started off early with uh a right behind me is my 57 telly uh the wooden one and this is my 76 um but like i'm super particular about about getting a just a a good basic sounding guitar right and i, I must have played like 60 guitars before i found this one and i know we've beat the snot out of it but um it's uh if you can get that the, really get the good sounds it, it will stand out so I, I for me it's like focus focus on like getting that stuff getting your sounds and stuff really really good and just listen to other people and watch people listen to what they're doing like what are, what are they buying to get that sound and and how are they using it so that's that one um ah Lena Patrick, we got a winner. Lena, is it Lena? And then I would another one. Please explain how to set. Okay, so there's another. Okay, so okay, so we got we got another question. Brent, please explain how to set set input level and avoid clipping if vocal if vocal uh, volume increases. Okay, so i.e. like for bel belting and whatnot that's where the compression is really great right um i'm caught up on my guitar here um so yeah that's where that's where compression is great um on a mic like this on hype mic so we have our compression settings right that's compression setting one which is pretty light and that's that's great for that would probably be your starting points for vocals if if you want to go to c compression setting number two i would say if you're starting to get like too much it's clipping when you're hitting that loud stuff two things one practice the mic technique of of, of just pulling back when you're singing those notes if you watch like you know there's Christine Aguilera, you just see her always like <laughs> like yanking because she's just belting, you know, 90% of the time. But she's an unbelievably great singer with great control. And she just knows how to control the mic a little bit, right? In the studio, you just got to pull back and forth just a little bit. And that's a great thing to practice. So practice that, but also practice then... Dealing, sorry, I went to blend settings. Practice also dealing and finding the compression settings that you like. Um, compression will definitely help that, but you can't be right up on the mic. Um, you gotta you gotta give it some space and just kind of and, and kind of set the level and try your highest level first, and then set set your your input gain to that to whatever that's gonna be. So. Uh, Eddie, Eddie said, um, standard or drop tuning. So I, I don't use drop tune. I, I tuned it 440. I, I do want to keep one guitar around here tuned down so I can jam to like Van Halen songs. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I, I typically do standard tuning. Um, yeah. Any others? I'd have to wait a second if I ask for any others. Um, uh, do, 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 do. 
Okay, so is that Cody? Cody? Oh, there was that was the second question. I think trying to keep up with the question. So, I think I think we got it. Feeling good? Anybody? I can take any questions and please. Oh, wait, 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 Ron. Yes. So, okay, Ron. Ron asked if you can't if you can not use. Okay, let me go back through this here. Uh, hold on. Let me make that so it doesn't. So, GarageBand. Notice that GarageBand in this nice room, this was just the, like the default kind of setting that came up. Oh, is that changing in time? I think it might it might lag a little bit there. Um, there is a little compression there. Um, I might uh, I might go. Let me let me see. Let me see where we're at. Let me go to let me go to E here really quick. Section E. E boom. All right, so let's let's just deal with this guitar track right here. So if I open that up, right? So now we can I'm going to pull that into the center too. So there's a little compression on that guitar right here and you probably you you're probably not really going to hear it too much. I guess you do if you crank it. I'd probably, I'd probably do a little compression. I'd probably let it, I would just listen to it. Basically, Ron, what I'm, I'm listening for is if, it, if it, how much pumping is happening. You know, if the, once, once the compressor gets pretty hot, like... That's like, check, check, check. It sounds like super squished. Like that's the, the really, really, you know, they call it the smash setting. Check, 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 check. And it sounds like, welcome to double a WNBC. You know, it sounds like it sounds like a radio, super smashy radio host. Um, but that's cool. Sometimes you might want that. Um, I'll just kind of listen for it. But if it's clamping too hard, I'll I'll change it. Um, so yeah, once once I get everything kind of recorded in here, or into here, then I'll then I'll mess with these 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 settings a little bit. Decide if it's actually pretty nice. That's not. So I'll start messing with those. Yeah. Cool. So again, guys, if if you want to reach out to me, you can get me on Instagram. Um, like I said, I can answer some more questions there if you forgot any. But yeah, that's kind of it. We're gonna do this for I think we're gonna do this for another couple of weeks. So um please uh you know, keep on checking in, subscribe to Apogee's channel, um, get on their mailing list. They always send out mailers for this. We, th you know, they, they will keep you in touch. Thank you again, Apogee. Thank you, Bob, Betty, Cody, Seb, Sean, Marlene, all you guys. Uh, such a great team over there at Apogee. Um, super, super grateful for you guys. This is really fun. Um, everybody stay safe. Um, and uh, you know, wash your hands. Um, stay inside. Let's let let's get let's let's get back to normal. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me. I so appreciate it. Hope to see you next week. Think it's gonna be same time, same place. Awesome. Take care.